we are here uh, this afternoon for uh, cultivating a session on uh, cultivating sustainable blended and open learning in the Philippines. Um, and uh, basically, uh, uh, it comes, uh, you know, just to briefly introduce the session, uh, blended open and online learning or BOL, as, uh, uh, to, to use an abbreviation, uh, are increasingly recognized as the future of higher education. Um, with the potential to cater to many and more diverse learners, uh, increase student engagement uh, using a range of digital tools and resources, and develop digital literacies and independent learning skills that are essential to lifelong learning. Now, for this potential to be realized, uh, it is useful to go beyond uh, thinking of ball as an option for individual institutions or individual practitioners uh, to instead articulate a ball ecosystem. Uh, composed of institutions interacting at varied levels as a community of ball practitioners um, or ball providers. Uh, so this session will consist of three presentations, very brief to uh, uh, address that point. Uh, yeah, the, in the first part, uh, I will um, outline uh, the ball ecosystem uh, in the Philippines, no? including its components and dynamics. Uh, and then uh, this will be followed by a description of a capacity building program uh, called CBOL, uh, Sustainable Institution Building in uh, Blended Online and Open Learning, uh, which aims to foster effective ball practice uh, within institutions and across institutions uh, in the ball ecosystem. Uh, and finally, uh, the third uh, part will be uh, uh, sharing of um, uh, case studies uh, of, or cases, uh, case experiences uh, from practitioners uh, in different types of uh, higher education institutions. Uh, actually, two, no, um, one from a private uh, HEI and another from a state university. Uh, okay, so um, uh, the Philippine higher education uh, sector is uh, confronted with the challenge of uh, relevance and sustainability uh, in a context of high levels of uh, income inequality and poverty, uh, high dropout rates uh, and poor academic achievement, um, and lack of funding for education, among others. Uh, how can blended online and open learning, uh, or BOL, uh, help to address these systemic problems? Uh, and how do differently situated um, HEIs or higher education institutions uh, come together uh, to quote converge and harmonize efforts as uh, end quote as the guidelines on the implementation uh, of flexible learning uh, invites no uh, to make quality higher education accessible to all learners uh, through ball. Uh, to help us address these questions, we propose the adoption of an ecosystem perspective on blended online and open learning in the Philippines. Now, what is an ecosystem? Uh, the dictionary defines ecosystem as a biological community of uh, interacting organisms and their physical environment. Uh, it is also a complex network uh, or an interconnected system, according to the dictionary. Now, a biological uh, ecosystem um, has biotic uh, uh, and abiotic components. So biotic means uh, they're living organisms. Uh, abiotic means they're non-living. So that would include uh, the weather, uh, the climate, uh, earth, sun, soil, and so on. Uh, and these uh, biotic and abiotic components are interacting with each other. Uh, in this ecosystem, uh, each organism has its own niche or role uh, to play. Now, um, like a biological ecosystem, uh, a ball ecosystem or a blended online and open learning ecosystem has biotic components. Uh, that would be uh, the teachers, the learners, uh, and even the higher education institutions. Um, and abiotic components, uh, which would of course include things like um, educational technology, uh, infrastructure, uh, buildings, uh, campuses, no? uh, both virtual and physical, and, and the lab. No? And uh, they are interacting in nodes no? or uh, concentrated points of interaction or hubs uh, across a network. Uh, so this figure that you see is a depiction of the current uh, ball ecosystem in the Philippines. And I will just uh, talk about, about um, the key institutions uh, or the principal species, to use the biological terminology, uh, in this uh, uh, ecosystem. So um, uh, each of them ha has a role to play, uh, and uh, there are relationships among them. Uh, so for, uh, the CHED, for example, or the Commission on Higher Education, 
uh, is our regulatory body in higher education. Uh, it sets set standards, uh, formulates policies, uh, and the like, no? and uh, controls funding uh, for uh, state colleges and universities. Uh, UP is the national university, uh, and as such, it is mandated to uh, lead in higher education uh, and development by setting uh, academic standards and initiating innovations uh, in teaching, research, and uh, faculty development uh, in various uh, disciplines and professions, uh, and also by uh, providing advanced studies uh, for uh, the faculty of uh, the other HEIs. Uh, I'm actually quoting from the from RA 9500, which is uh, the UP um, code, uh, not the UP code, but the, the UP charter. Okay. Uh, the UP Open University is also a key player, I think, uh, in the in the ball higher uh, ball ecosystem. It, uh, it leads in. Uh, it is recognized as a leading provider of distance education uh, in the country, and uh, it is mandated by law. Uh, <laughs> by the Open Distance Learning Act of, uh, 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 I can't remember when it was promulgated, but this is RA 10650, uh, to contribute to upgrading the quality of Philippine uh, education system by developing innovative instructional strategies and technologies and sharing these with other colleges and universities through cooperative programs. Uh, and of course, you have uh, state universities and colleges, or SUCs, uh, which are institutions of higher learning established by the Philippine Congress and which are fully subsidized by the national government. At present, we have 112 SUCs in the country. And then you have the private uh, universities and colleges, uh, which are incorporated as non-stop or stop uh, educational or corporations, and of which there are more than 1,700 at the moment uh, in, uh, in, across the Philippine higher education sector. Uh, there are other players like uh, TESDA and the uh, Department of Education. Now, um, a biological ecosystem uh, needs uh, to be both robust and resilient. Uh, it should be able to withstand or respond to threats uh, while maintaining uh, diversity and important uh, connections or links between members, and it should be able to adapt uh, to and recover from environmental change. Uh, in this ecosystem, uh, uh, not every node is a link to every other node, uh, and uh, the links may vary in strength. Uh, and of course, nodes may grow or they may shrink uh, or be or disappear over time. Uh, however, uh, if it is a robust and resilient ecosystem, uh, this ecosystem will not fail. Um, now, uh, how do we therefore develop ecosystem uh, 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 resilience and robustness in the ball ecosystem? Okay, uh, to shift to that, no? Um, and, uh, well, basically, similarly, uh, developing uh, resilience in the ball ecosystem means uh, cultivating diversity, uh, vigor and adaptability, and stronger linkages among uh, uh, institutions. Uh, and uh, the, the diversity has to do with uh, ensuring that there are different types of educational institutions that are offering a range of programs in different modes uh, to di diverse learners, because, of course, no one institution can provide uh, access to quality education uh, to all of the uh, learners in the Philippines. Uh, and um, aside from that, uh, there must be uh, strong partnerships and collaboration between and among uh, these uh, ball providers. Uh, so how do we cultivate resilience um, in the ball ecosystem? Uh, so first, uh, it is important to cultivate uh, within academic institutions uh, an ecosystem approach. Uh, uh, to board. Um, and uh, this includes uh, developing a systems perspective or view and uh, developing capabilities uh, in the institution or each in, in each institution uh, in the following, uh, being able to analyze their institutional context, uh, which will include not only their mission and uh, the communities that they serve, as an institution, uh, but also uh, the external environment, no, uh, national legislation, policies, uh, guidelines, uh, global developments, okay? Uh, and then uh, also knowing what the available resources are within the institution. Uh, a capacity in fostering and strengthening coordination among the units uh, within the institution that are in charge of the different aspects of uh, ball delivery, you know, what we call the ball subsystems, 
uh, and uh, being able to calibrate their resources and the effort that they need to uh, expend for each uh, sub uh, ball subsystem to develop and the strategy for managing change in the institution and uh, anticipating the internal and external factors that may weaken the institution's ball system uh, and setting up uh, healthy uh, ball subsystems. Uh, now, uh, beyond the in individual institution, um, uh, developing a resilient ball ecosystem means uh, uh, de uh, taking an ecological approach to capacity building across uh, the higher education sector. Uh, and uh, this will include, uh, uh, this will require uh, making a careful analysis of institutional backgrounds and capacities um, uh, and their levels of engagement in ball. Uh, based on uh, the institutional setups that they have. Uh, recognizing the diversity of institutions and uh, uh, putting each uh, uh, in a spectrum no, in order to be able to see what types of assistance they need no, uh, uh, in, uh, in each group. Uh, it also requires intentional design uh, to deepen engagement, uh, encourage interaction between institutions, uh, and provide um, feedback. Uh, as they uh, implement ball uh, and uh, develop their capacities. And finally, uh, it, it requires paying attention to environmental factors so that uh, well, as inhibit growth, uh, especially those that inhibit growth, uh, including, uh, for example, a weak uh, IT infrastructure. Uh, under the ODL Act, which I mentioned, RA 10650, uh, UPOU can help establish uh, a robust and resilient ball ecosystem. Uh, how? By, by facilitating the development of zonal centers uh, and nurturing a strong network uh, of ball leaders and practitioners. Uh, um, uh, these centers, uh, called ODL centers in RA 10650, uh, um, should be across uh, the country, uh, and uh, they will uh, uh, they they are envisioned to become strong enough to uh, 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 do capacity building in uh, blended online and open learning uh, within their respective catchment areas. No, so uh, if in uh, the, the RA ten six fifty they are called uh, uh, ODL centers, uh, we propose that in a ball ecosystem they should become the ball centers. Uh, so at the end, no, uh, I want to say that we actually have quite a long way to go uh, in building or cultivating a robust and resilient ball ecosystem uh, in Philippine higher education. Uh, uh, what may be highlighted at this point is the value of an ecosystem perspective uh, in adopting uh, ball uh, as a strategy for providing quality higher education for all in the Philippines. Uh, an ecosystem's perspective prompts us to think about how a healthy ecosystem uh, might be fostered. Uh, and uh, while uh, ecosystems develop uh, organically, um, uh, uh, we, there is a role for design no, in this process, and uh, uh, especially the design of capacity building efforts.